to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Over the next three days, you will enjoy a fully guided state-controlled tour. Cell phones, computers, radios, and other communication devices will be confiscated upon arrival and returned to you upon departure. You will stay with your guides at all times and cannot take photos without their express permission. This was our introduction to the state of North Korea, our first glimpse into the so-called axis of evil. We'd been accepted to go on a rare state-guided tour for three days across the country. It was one of the few times Americans have been allowed in. This is our travelogue. So welcome to Pyongyang. And get prepared for the view. Sick. There's Jaren reading the Pyong... What, what, what are you reading there? Reading the Pyongyang Times, uh, according to this... Uh, very objective publication. The U.S. <laughs> carried out an aerial espionage against the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Filming here in North Korea is no easy task. This camera you see here, a Panasonic DVX-100. I sort of had to hide it under my bag here with oranges and grapefruits on top of it. Some of the rigors of filming here in North Korea. This is Pyongyang the capital of possibly the last remaining outpost of the Cold War. A city rebuilt in 1953 in Soviet-style architecture. A city, North Koreans say, is impenetrable to the forces of globalization. There are no commercial billboards here, only communist propaganda. The first thing we notice is the quiet. Why? Because people can't own personal cars, so the roads are virtually empty. As a result, buses are packed. And since most people walk, sidewalks are main thoroughfares, and the metro, which double as bomb shelters, is bustling. But again, the quiet. We don't find anyone talking to each other. The eyes of founding father Kim Il-sung and his son, the current leader Kim Jong-il, looking down on passengers sitting in silence. This is the view of Pyongyang at night, and we went to sleep that night to the tune of this. It's a nationalistic lullaby of sorts, a nightly song played at midnight and again at 5 a.m. honoring the state. Day two takes us out to the city of Kaesong. To get there, we drive through the countryside. The land is fairly barren, but beautiful. We see farmers teaming up to till the land. Rice and maize, their crops of choice, because it feeds the most people in a country crippled by poverty. Published estimates from US congressional delegations and the UN report anywhere from 600,000 to 3.5 million people dying due to famine in North Korea in the mid-90s. Kaesong, like most places, has a giant bronze statue of Kim Il-sung. Basically, he founded the country following Japanese occupation in the 1940s, and although he died in 93, is still revered as a living god today. North Koreans must call him, quote, the great leader. Please photograph the great leader's full body. Do not disrespectfully only show part of him. We comply. The great leader. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it. What? President. President. And presidents. And president. We're just told by our guy. And president. Oh, and we can't forget his son, the current president, Kim Jong il. Our guide's reminding us he must be called, quote, dear leader. We got a storybook view of Kae Song a capital city of a once unified Korean peninsula between the 10th and 14th centuries. To 
To see the split that separated Korea in World War II, we head to the DMZ. A patch of concrete separates north from south. With soldiers on guard 24 hours a day, the armistice was negotiated here in this room by the Americans and the North Koreans, effectively ending the Korean War. <laughs> After a long day, the last thing we wanted was the repeated 5 a.m. wake up call over the city's loudspeakers. Today, you will be honored to visit the holy site of Manu De Grain Monument, the bronze statue of great leader erected in 1972 to celebrate his 60th birthday. You must bow and place flowers at his feet. To lighten things up, our guides take us to the movies. There is a Hollywood of sorts here. This is a North Korean movie studio. Kim Il is a huge movie buff. The state-run movie studio, replete with its own Japanese and Chinese sets, produces between 20 and 30 films a year. We were lucky enough to encounter this North Korean blockbuster in the making. The only way to see North Korea is on a tour. There's no such thing as solo traveling. It doesn't exist. You have to be guided at all times. So finally, we've got a little break from our tour and uh, really appreciating it. For about 30 seconds. 30 more seconds, and then we're getting back on the bus. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Of course, we're not going to any of the places that are not glossy and polished and the North Korea that... You mean we're not going to labor camp? We're not going to any labor camps. Certainly not. Dissidents who fled the North have testified before the U.S. House of Representatives Subcommittee on International Relations that more than a dozen secret political prison camps exist in the country, holding between 150,000 and 200,000 prisoners subjected to torture, forced labor, and starvation. Again, our state minders wouldn't be showing us these allegations. Instead, they bring us to the USS Pueblo, a spy ship that was captured by the North Koreans in a 1968 incident gone awry. After being captured by North Korean forces claiming it was in North Korean waters, the crew, claiming it was a research vessel, later went on to issue confessions and write a so-called letter of apology. Here's once again the North Korean version of events. The brazen-faced U.S. imperialists brought the Pueblo incident to the U.N. Security Council to shift the responsibility upon us. The enemy attempted to make us surrender, not with strength, but through negotiations. General Kim Jong-il instructed to state, the U.S. government should take responsibility and apologize. Then we return the prisoners but we cannot return Pueblo as it is a trophy. Okay, enough war talk. Let's talk philosophy. To truly understand the state, you have to understand that it was founded on this communist-influenced philosophy called Juche. Uh, we're here in Pyongyang, and this is the Tower of Juche Idea. What's Juche Idea? Juche Idea. Well, it, it was originally based on the Marxist and Leninist philosophies. And what it says, its philosophy, is that man is at the center of life. Uh, there's no room for religion here. Okay, in fact, man is the religion here. This principle has allowed them to deify their great leaders and turn them into godlike figures. The tower is more than 600 feet tall. From the top, you get a panoramic of this city of 2.5 million people. A city free of pollution due to the noticeable lack of industry and in automobiles. Only these three smokestacks stand 
and only 250,000 cars drive the entire country. Internet doesn't exist here. Travel abroad is severely restricted, and the people we met all seem to obediently tow the party line. Getting any insight from everyday North Koreans on such issues on camera is tough. We spoke with one girl. So what do you think about the USA? In my opinion, the European people are very gentle and friendly. But uh, the American government is a problem. Because the American government attack against North Korea. The, they said axis of evil. Do you think America wants to attack North Korea? Maybe I think so. Why do you think so? Because the, uh, the American, American military army uh, was stationed in the South Korea not until now. Does North Korea want to attack the U.S.? No, never. We want the peace and we want uh, the, our country is reunified by peacefully without the interference of the, any foreigners. The sun sets and our tour winds down. There was so much we'd never be shown. The alleged forced labor camps for dissidents, the poverty, and of course, is North Korea continuing with nuclear armament or will they strike a diplomatic deal at future six-party talks? As the full moon rises over the tower, we can only wonder if the world will ever get the full picture.